Due to the pandemic, all schools had to shut down and shift to the online mode. During the online mode of schooling, Google Classroom picked up and everyone started taking classes, giving out assignments, uploading notes and lot more on Google Classroom. Creating a Google Classroom and keeping track of the students' assignments and stuff can be a bit of a hectic task for so many students in your school. Say you're the moderator of your school and your task is to create 10 different Google Classrooms with different names, sections, rooms, descriptions and more for different teachers. Manually doing this will be a very long process and that's where Google Apps Script comes in. Using Google Apps Script you can automatically create multiple Google Classrooms from a Google Sheet and store the Google Classroom codes in the class code section here. So the sample Google Sheet that I have here is the sheet that contains the name of the classes that I need to create followed by the sections, the room and the description of the class that I want. So now I'm going to be going ahead and opening my script editor and let's get into the coding. Before that, if you want to create Google Classrooms manually, the step is going to be simple. Just go to classroom.google.com and click on the plus button here and click on create class and then accept some terms and conditions. Then you need to put in the same data that we have here, classroom section, subject room. So that's what we're going to be doing in this video. We're going to be automating this process using Google Apps Script. See, you already have the Google Classroom code, so you just need to click on plus again. Click on join class and here you need to paste in the code that has been assigned or given to you. So we're going to go to our app script editor, we're going to just clear this out here. And we're going to be creating our first function that's going to be on open. So this function is going to be creating menus in our Google Sheet. So that the teacher can just come in here, click on the menu button and automatically run the code just on a click of a button. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be writing the function here. So I'm just going to be creating a new variable called constant menu. And here I'm going to be doing the spreadsheet dot app dot get UI. I'm going to be getting the UI of the Google sheet followed by I'm going to be doing the create menu. So the menu name I'm just going to for now just going to name it as menu. Next I'm going to be doing menu dot add item here so here in this add item function you need to pass the name of the menu that you want so we're going to be creating classrooms here i'm going to be keeping it as create classroom and after this after the comma you need to add the function name that you want to run so i'm just going to go ahead here and create the other two functions that i'm going to be using in this video And the last function is going to be create classes. So this is the main function that's going to be doing the most of the action in this video. So I'm just going to go here and paste this function that I want to run here. And after you're done, just do the menu dot add to UI. So it will get added here. Close it here and the semicolon. So the menu code for this video is already done. So we're just going to go here change this to say Google Classroom API, Google App Script, you can save and I'm just going to click on run. You can see the execution started and it's completed and now if I go back here I can see menu, I click on create classroom here. For now it won't run since we have not written any code for the specified function. Before writing the code you need to add, you need to add the Google Classroom API. I have already added the Classroom API here so I'm just going to remove this and show it to you once again, how to add APIs to your Google Apps Script project. Just going to be clicking on the service, scrolling down. You can select any API that you want to work with. I have created multiple videos on a lot of Google Workspace APIs. I'll be leaving the playlist link in the description. You can check it out. Also, if you're new to Google Classroom, I'll be leaving a Google Classroom course link in the description and that will get you started on your Google Classroom journey. So I'm going to be selecting the Google Classroom API API here and this is going to be the command that we're going to be using to use this API so I'm just going to make if you want you can change it to something custom that you want but I'm going to be leaving it as classroom I'm just going to click on add and the API will get added here in a few seconds so here you can see the API has been added to the abstract project so let's get into the coding part of this video so I'm going to go here I'm going to be creating a new variable called constant CRS and here I'm going to be using the classroom variable that we had declared in the API. And I'm just going, going to be doing new course. So here we have created a new course in our Google Classroom. 
and now I I'm gonna be needing to pass in the keys that is there. So here I I, I passed a variable properties here which will be containing each of these details side by side with the keys that is there. So say the name index is gonna be one. It's gonna be zero. So it's gonna be zero one zero two zero three zero four zero five. That's the keys that are going to be present here. And after that, I'm going to be doing a for each function here where I'm going to be taking the keys and I'm going to be using the arrow function in JavaScript. Let's put a semicolon here. And I'm going to be doing the CRS bracket key. And then for each of these keys here, I'm going to be doing the properties and getting the data from the pop properties for each of the keys made here. It's going to come out of this one and I'm going to be creating a new variable called created class. So this classroom in this, this, this is the main part where the new classroom is going to be created. So the course has already been created. Now using this, we're going to be passing the data. That is the CRS variable is going to be passed in this part so that the data is sent to the API so that we can create the Google classrooms. So we're going to bring CRS here. I'm going to do CRS here and now I'm going to be going down here and I'm going to be returning the enrollment course as we as, as we had discussed previously in this video we want to pass and or not pass we just want to paste in the Google classroom codes here on creating the classrooms so I'm just going to be doing return here I'm going to be doing return and I'm going to be doing created class I'm going to be doing created class created class dot the wrong function running created class dot enrollment code so now this code will be sent back to this function here now i'm going to be going here and this function is going to be getting the data from the spreadsheet so i'm going to be doing a spreadsheet app space here and i'm going to bring spreadsheet app dot get active spreadsheet sorry it's going to be active spreadsheet here and after this i'm going to be creating a new variable called sheet const sheet and here I'm going to be doing the ss dot get the active sheet if you want you can get the google sheet by the name or the id but for now I'm going to be since we only have one google sheet it's always preferable to have or use the active sheet function now I'm going to be declaring some variables here that I need to go through each of the variables present or so here I've created the start row, the start column and the last column variable here uh, in in, one of, in in my previous videos that you watched I've never created these variables as so here I'm going to be doing the constant data here and I'm going to be using the variables that I previously created here and I'm going to be passing them into the get range function here so I'm going to be doing start row then it's going to be the start column then I'm going to be doing the sheet dot get last row since I don't know exactly how many classes the app will, the moderator might need to create, I'm going to be using the get last row function. So if, if, if I even add one more here, I don't need to change the code here. It will automatically catch it. Next, I'm going to be doing minus one since I want to, I want to start the last row from the second row so that we don't take these headings into count here. And I'm going to be passing in the last column but variable here. I'm just going to click on save. Now I, I've successfully got the data from the google sheet if you want we can do a short logger dot log here or a console dot log it's just printing the data in data here i'm going to click on save so select the create classes function that is there here and i'm going to click on run okay, this is the range yes we forgot to do we forgot to get the get values functions since the get range will only give you a range in the return part you know, get values here and now if i run the function I can see all my data has come in that is the maths, the marks, maths, remedial, A1, A12. That is going to be the section, the room, and description. It's going to remove this out here. And then the next thing I'm going to be doing is declaring some more variables, which I'll be explaining soon. So here I have created a number of variables. The first one is the object. I have created an object here called enrollment codes where the enrollment codes will be contained, which later will be pasted into this column in the Google sheet. Next, I have the name index 
section index room and the description index so now i'm going to be using the for each variable to go through each of this variable each of the data present in the google sheet and i'm going to be passing them into this function directly so i don't need to create a new object store them in that and send it there i can directly just use the classroom data function and pass in the data from here so i'm going to create a new i'm just going to be doing data dot for each and i'm going to be using the row variable here so that we can go through each of them it's going to be the first function here and now i'm going to be creating another variable called e code and here is going to be my function that is the classroom data here is here it will so here all the data will be going in so i'm going to be declaring name here which is going to be row bracket name index same thing i'm going to be doing for all the variables that i have that i need for creating the google classroom so it's going to be section I'm going to be doing row section index and i would always suggest to you to create these in variables not in magic numbers so that even if it changes all you need to do is go here and change the numbers and not affect the code so after the section we're going to be doing a row it's going to be row to be row index and in the end it's going to be description and we're going to be doing a row it's going to be description index so i'm just going to space out here and i'm going to come out of this function and now i'm just going to push these e codes to that function up there we have I'm just going to be doing enrollment code. Enrollment code start push. And here I'm going to be passing the e code variable that we had. Now that we are done with this, we're going to be creating, we're going to be pasting this data back into the Google Sheet. So I'm going to be doing sheet. And we're going to be doing the get range function. And after this, we're going to be using the set values function so in the get range i'm going to pass in the start row here after that i'm going to be doing the column last the column start first then i'm going to be doing the enrollment codes dot length why am i doing this there's a reason behind that since i don't know how many classrooms are going to be there i don't know the exact length so i don't want to keep on coming back and changing the number of rows for which i need to paste the enrollment code so if there are five classes there will be five codes already created so it's going to be automatically counted using the dot length function and after that i'm just going to put in the column last function here and after this i'm going to be doing the set values function don't forget to use the values instead of the value and i'm going to put in the enrollment codes here our code here is complete so i click on save here and i'm going to be running the create classes function we're going to click on run here Okay, yes, we forgot to specify the owner ID. So we just need to go here and we're going to create a global variable here. And I'm just going to do owner underscore email. So here, this is this email is going to be mine. And for your, for your case, if you're the moderator, just go ahead and put in your email here. If you want to copy the code, I'll be leaving the GitHub link in the description. You can go ahead and copy it from there. I'm going to be adding this here in this part of the code. It's going to be owner ID and I'm just going to pass in the variable that we created here. I'm going to click on save. There has to be a comma. And I'm going to click on save. And now let's just go ahead, select the create class and click on run. See that the execution is started. Here you can see all the Google Classrooms have successfully been created here. And if I go back to my Google Sheet, I can see all the Google Classroom codes have successfully been pasted into the Google Sheet. Now let's just go ahead and verify. So I'm just going to accept this one. I'm going to click here, continue here. And if I go to the settings here and I see it's going to be chemistry 12, chemistry theory classroom, it's going to be theory 1. The description is going to be this. The room is A13. And if I see, if I check the code, it's going to be set to the same thing as being pasted here. So this is all for this video. I hope you understood how to bulk create Google Classrooms using the Google Classroom API and Google Apps Script. Now that we have the class codes in our Google Sheet, how do you send it to the students to join? Yes, that's possible. We're going to be using a mail merge add-on called yet another mail merge. So in the next video, I'm going to be showing you how to use that add-on to send mass emails.
containing the Google Classroom code. If you like this video then don't forget to like share and for more content hit the subscribe button. I will see you in the next one.